I'm going to do it again because I got to break Kevin's new record. <laughs> I got to get back on the stage because this new record that Kevin got, I got to have it back, Kevin. I've talked to him. Eddie, what the f*** you doing? Get on stage. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe. But Jussie Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. I don't know what records nobody broke. Kevin. You can't ignore that Kevin Hart is one of the most famous comedians around these days, but recently his name has been popping up everywhere and not for good reasons. It looks like he's become a target, especially for other black comedians. And we all know how tough the comedy world can be. One minute you're on top of the world and the next you're the joke, all because of a few words. So it makes sense that Kevin might be feeling a little nervous, but why would someone as successful as Kevin be worried about what other comedians say? Enter Eddie Murphy, a true legend, who's apparently about to spill some secrets. There's a rumor that Kevin has some skeletons in his closet, and we started to see some of this when Cat Williams shared a bit earlier this year. Kevin tried to respond, but it was clear he was rattled. Now, with Eddie and others rumored to be revealing more, it seems like Kevin's troubles aren't over. It looks like he's still not in the clear. Let's get into it. Eddie Murphy is like that cool uncle who's always calm and doesn't start any drama. So if he's coming after Kevin Hart, you know it's something big. Despite their mutual respect and past collaborations, like on the movie Meet Dave, Eddie's not holding back. So what's all the fuss about? Rumors have been flying about how Kevin made it to the top, like getting cozy with influential people in the industry, or maybe even stepping on others along the way. Then there's talk about some questionable things he might have done. Eddie's been around since the 90s, so he knows how things work in showbiz. If anyone knows the truth about Kevin, it's him. Plus, consider what Cat Williams said on the Club Shay Shay podcast. He outright called Kevin an industry plant, noting how fast Kevin became famous, landing a sitcom and starring in Soul Plane, all in his first year in LA. According to Kat, this is suspicious and makes Kevin's rise to fame seem not so straightforward. He suggests Kevin had his deals lined up from the start. We heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading. What do you think a plant? For those who might not know about the drama between Cat Williams and Kevin Hart, it all started with a movie called Fool's Gold back in 2008. Williams was supposed to be the star, but because he was dealing with some legal issues, he couldn't go to Australia where the movie was being filmed. That's when Kevin Hart stepped in and took the role. People say this is when the tension between Williams and Hart first started. Cat Williams didn't keep quiet about his thoughts. He made it clear he was worried about letting people who might not always tell the truth control the story without anyone questioning them. He talked about how it's unfair that the ones who aren't honest have all the advantages and resources, making it hard for everyone else to keep up. And he doesn't believe that just because someone has a lot of resources, they're telling the truth. Kat thinks it's a big problem to let these not so honest people shape the story, especially when they have so much power and resources. But Kat also knows that speaking up could make him look bad. He understands that some might see him as just another jealous comedian. When someone asked him if he was worried about the backlash for speaking out, William Williams had a response ready. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know, what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is, is to act like it didn't happen. The theory that Kevin Hart might be what some call an industry plant ties back to a rumor in Hollywood that's been going around for a long time. There's this idea that famous people are sometimes pressured into wearing a dress in a movie, almost like it's a test they have to pass to become more famous. And Cat Williams isn't the only one who's talked about this. Dave Chappelle has brought it up too. Back in 2006, when he was on Oprah's show, Dave shared why he decided not to take a huge $50 million deal from Comedy Central. He explained that it wasn't all about the money for him because sometimes big money offers come with big problems. Having been in the entertainment world since he was 14, Dave knew all too well about the weird stuff that can happen behind the scenes. He mentioned how Mariah Carey got a $100 million deal and then suddenly people started saying she was crazy or how Martin Lawrence, after becoming really successful, ended up in a scary situation on the street, yelling that someone was trying to harm him. These stories made Dave very careful. When Oprah asked him if he had heard such stories, Dave said yes, 
He had seen things like this happen, especially when someone's career was about to skyrocket. Dave felt like he was being pushed to make jokes that made fun of him, not with him, almost like he was being asked to embarrass himself for money. And there's even more. Dave Chappelle remembered a time when he was asked to wear a dress for a movie scene with Martin Lawrence. He walked into his dressing room, saw a dress, and thought it was a mistake. But it turned out the dress was for him to wear in a scene where Martin's character tries to escape from jail by disguising Dave as a woman. Chappelle's like, nah, I'm not doing that. It wasn't in the discussion. They really pushed him, telling him the scene would be super funny. But Dave Chappelle stood firm. He said he didn't need to wear a dress to get laughs. The pressure was on from the writers, directors, and producers. But Dave didn't give in. Finally, they thought of a new scene that didn't need the dress. And Dave wondered, how did you come up with that so quickly? He didn't like the idea, not because wearing a dress was a problem in itself, but because he felt the industry was trying to force black comedians to do whatever it took to be successful. They didn't stop pushing until they saw Dave wouldn't change his mind. This moment was a big deal for Dave. Being asked to wear a dress made him see that he wasn't the only one facing this kind of pressure. A lot of other black actors had been asked to do similar things. Martin Lawrence was in Big Mama's House. Eddie Murphy was in the Nutty Professor series. Jamie Foxx was Ugly Wanda on In Living Color. And the Wyans brothers were in White Chicks. And don't forget Juana Mann, though it wasn't as big. Then there's Tyler Perry, famous for his Medea movies. Around this time, Kevin Hart started speaking up, sharing advice about artists needing to protect their image and set limits. Kevin was clear about his own rules. No wearing a dress for him. When asked if he'd ever been in a situation like wearing a dress for a role, Kevin said, no. He emphasized knowing what you stand for and protecting your image. Kevin even talked about turning down a chance to dribble a basketball on a talk show because it might make him look silly. For Kevin, it was all about keeping his brand safe. Definitely haven't ran into to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have, you have to have boundaries, you have to have limits that you refuse to cross. So things took a surprising turn. Just one year after saying no to dresses, Kevin Hart appears on an SNL skit dressed as nine-year-old Oscar nominee Kuvenjane Wallace. Is nine-year-old Oscar nominee Kuvenjane Wallace. This move didn't sit well with his fans. They started accusing him of going back on his word and being dishonest. It was as if they were saying, wait a minute, weren't you just talking about setting limits and protecting your image, Kevin? This unexpected change left fans feeling disappointed and they didn't hesitate to voice their opinions, pointing out that he was doing the very thing he advised against. But then, Kevin Hart did something unexpected. He changed his stance on wearing dresses. He had previously been adamant about not wearing one, saying it was a firm no from him. But when the chance came up and he saw humor in it, he thought, why not? Let's go for it. But here's where it gets complicated. Kevin goes on the defense, arguing that no one forced Martin Lawrence into Big Mama's house, Tyler Perry into becoming Medea, or Jamie Foxx into wearing Wanda's dress. They chose to do it, he said. I was actually, I was actually one of those comedians that said, no, I wouldn't wear a dress. There's no way I would wear a dress. And, and then when proposed with the opportunity of what I felt was funny, I thought, oh, it's funny, I'm gonna do it. It's all about choice. You know, right. nobody makes you do anything. Right. Nobody says, this is what you gotta do. This is the only way that you're gonna do it. Kevin is now saying it's all about personal choice. However, there's a strong argument going around that it's not just about choosing. Before the big money was offered, Kevin wasn't cool with the dress idea. But as soon as there's talk of a big payday, it seems like sticking to one's principles isn't as important. Money has this power to change minds, making people do things they once said they'd never do. And when it comes down to it, the introduction of money into the equation often shows what people are truly willing to do. Remember when Steve Harvey made that shocking statement about integrity? He openly said, if you give me $10 million, I'd embarrass myself all the way to the bank. He admitted he'd set aside his principles for a large sum of money. It's a tough truth to hear, but he didn't shy away from saying it. After Kevin Hart wore a dress on TV, his career skyrocketed. He became the comedian who made more money than any other before him. Some people might say he gave up his principles, but Kevin ended up making a ton of money from his comedy. Then there's Monique talking about a tough time when Kevin supposedly wasn't there for her, especially when she was dealing with big names like Oprah Winfrey. 
and Tyler Perry. And it seems like Kevin has been getting closer to both Tyler Perry and Oprah to make his way up in Hollywood. In 2021, Kevin Hart had Monique on his podcast, Comedy Gold Mines, where they talked about her career and her challenges with Oprah and Tyler Perry. Monique has had some ongoing disagreements with them. During the podcast, Monique has shared how hard times were for her family, feeling like they were backed into a corner. Kevin, being the good guy he is, offered his support. He told Monique she was like family to him, a mother, an aunt, and a sister all in one. Kevin didn't just offer kind words, he took action. Kevin said he didn't really know Oprah, but he promised to talk to Tyler Perry for Monique, and he did. After talking to Perry, Kevin came back to Monique with good news. Perry was willing to make peace and move on from the past. Kevin encouraged Monique to do the same, saying they should focus on the future and leave the bad stuff behind. Kevin's help didn't end with just words. In a talk with Shannon Sharp, Monique said Kevin also offered to work with her professionally. He said he'd help produce any project she wanted to start. Monique shared what Kevin told her saying, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he didn't want to revisit it, but I'll tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just do great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever you want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know. Monique also shared how Kevin really stepped up, giving her a big loan. And guess what? She even paid him back, plus some extra for his help. Now, here's the exciting part. After Kevin promised to help her relaunch her talk show, Monique was over the moon. Imagine, having Kevin Hart help produce your show could make it a huge hit. She quickly shared the news with her team and her media production company, and everyone was pumped about working with such a famous person. But then there was a shocking twist. Two weeks later, Monique got some surprising and upsetting news. Endemol, the company involved, revealed that Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky, called them to say Kevin was having doubts. Monique picked up the phone right away, hoping Kevin would explain what was going on. And what does she get? A vague reassurance. We'll talk Tuesday, don't worry about it, he says. Fast forward two years and Monique hasn't heard a single word from Kevin Hart, but hold on, now some fans are playing detective. They're starting to question if Kevin ever really planned to help Monique in the first place. They point to his somewhat questionable past, like the time he claimed to not really know Oprah Winfrey. How could anyone forget when Oprah sent him flowers after his car accident in 2019? In a conversation with Ellen, they dove into this, with Ellen asking about Kevin's accident and back surgery. Kevin mentioned he got a lot of flowers from people wishing him well, but it was Oprah's flowers that really stood out. Kevin went on to describe Oprah's flowers as something out of a fairy tale. They've been growing nonstop, practically turning his house into a jungle. It's become a bit of a joke in his house, everyone wondering when Oprah's super flowers will finally give up. He even joked that there must be someone secretly taking care of them because despite being neglected, they just keep on thriving. These flowers have become so significant, they've taken over the dining table, forcing the Hart family to eat on the floor rather than disturb Oprah's unstoppable plant. And now he's claiming he doesn't really know her. That seems a bit suspicious, doesn't it? Then there's the rumor mill churning out stories about Kevin making deals with the likes of Oprah and Tyler Perry. It suggested that if he had done anything to help Monique's career, it might have put his own career at risk. Now circling back to Monique's long-standing issues with Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry, this drama dates back to 2009 when Monique starred in Precious, a movie produced by Oprah and Tyler Perry and directed by Lee Daniels. The real conflict started when Oprah and Tyler suggested Monique promote the film without receiving any pay. Monique stood her ground saying, nah, not in my contract. Monique said she was paid only $50,000 for the entire movie, which wasn't much. And now they expected her to travel all over the world to promote the film without getting paid? Monique wasn't going to agree to that, but Oprah and Tyler didn't like her saying no. They began to ruin her reputation in the movie world, telling people she was hard to work with. Monique shared that Tyler Perry told her, you may want to consider promoting this film because if you get nominated for an Oscar, your next film is $3 to $5 million. And if you win, your next film is $6 to $8 million. Monique was like, Mo, hold up, I'm a black woman. Where are they paying those salaries, brother? She straight up told Tyler, I can't work for free. I've done what I was supposed to do. I can't go overseas and do this for free. Their back and forth continued with Tyler saying he doesn't believe in giving money away for free. And Monique firing back with, I don't believe in working for free, so we on the same page. Monique also said that Tyler Perry really tried to interfere with her other acting jobs. 
She explained it all started when she said no to going to France for the Cannes Film Festival to help promote Precious. The movie people wanted her to fly to France, but Monique, being busy with her talk show, her comedy work, and her family, politely said no. They even offered to give her a better hotel room to make her say yes, but she and her husband were firm in their decision, saying, nah, we're going to spend this time with our family. She said, Oprah, I'm doing a talk show, I'm doing a comedy tour, I have a husband and I have babies. I have a little bit of downtime and I am going to take advantage of it. So I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. So we mutually agreed to disagree. That was it. Next thing I know, I am considered difficult and hard to work with. When the third call came and they asked, What's it going to take to get Monique to France? Her husband straight up asked, is there a number associated with it? That's when they made it clear that they wouldn't pay for anyone's promotional activities. Monique pointed out she only got $50,000 for working on Precious, but for her, it wasn't about the money. She agreed to do the movie because a friend was involved. When the interviewer pressed her saying she needed the money for her family's needs and to pay bills, Monique answered, I think that's what America believes. Everyone says, I can't work for free. She explained that when the movie studio refused to pay for her Cannes appearance, they didn't make a fuss. But then the report started flying, painting Monique as demanding and difficult. And the whole thing went down to a simple request that they understood couldn't be met. But suddenly, Monique found herself labeled. And that's where the drama bounced in. Then, Kevin Hart found himself in hot water when word got out that he might have been cheating on his ex-wife, Tore Hart, with his now wife, Aniku Hart. Tore and Kevin ended their marriage in 2011 after being together for eight years. It was Tore who initiated the divorce, claiming she caught Kevin cheating with several women. And the talk around town is that Aniku, who Kevin is married to now, was one of the women he was involved with while still married to Torre. Torre shared how she had hoped she and Kevin would become a strong team, but those hopes were crushed by their divorce. She confessed to feeling upset, not just because she's against divorce, but also because it was hard for her to escape seeing Kevin everywhere, from big advertisements to events in Hollywood. I thought she really stood up for black people, especially strong black women, grow in their own way to become their own legends. I lost total respect for Oprah and Tyler Perry. And here's something even more shocking. Torre wasn't just Kevin's wife, she was also the brains behind a lot of his work, coming up with jokes for his movies and stand-up routines. What's really unfair is that Kevin never acknowledged her talent and contributions. Worse still, he's accused of using the money he earned from those jokes to spoil the women he was seeing on the side. Even after betraying Torre, Kevin had the nerve to make jokes about his infidelity in his stand-up acts. Imagine being the one who supported him before he was famous, helped him succeed, and then having to hear yourself being made fun of in his comedy shows. But things look like they could be getting even more complicated for Kevin because Torre is setting out on tour with Cat Williams. Kevin and Cat are pretty much enemies, so the news that Torre Hart, Kevin's former wife, is teaming up with Cat Williams for a tour is making everyone do a double take and ask, what's going on here? Mm. Torre let everyone know on Instagram by posting a photo of herself with her good friend, Cat Williams. She's not just joining him for any show, but on Cat's Dark Matter tour that's happening now. To spice things up, her post even had a clip from that explosive Club Shay Shay interview where Cat didn't hold back in criticizing Kevin and several others. When Kevin was later asked in an interview about Torre going on tour with Cat, he attempted to respond in a collected and grown-up way. However, it was pretty clear that he was bothered by the whole situation. He's clearly working hard to stay calm. Despite Kevin addressing and dismissing the rumors about him, pretending they're nothing to worry about, it's probable that they've still affected how people see him. What do you think about all this? Share your opinions in the comments, and I'll see y'all in the next video.